So we are on our uh, case ending in uh, 128 and 171. We'd ask the court to have those trail case ending in 110. In case ending in 110, as the court's aware, uh, last time we were in court, uh, the court had to write, I guess provisionally or whatever, I had to plan as part of the contract we have with Weekly with Boston with County. And then subsequently, after research, and I think probably the communication from the AOC, um, determined that uh, because Bob the County pays into the Indigent Defense Fund, uh, that aggravated murder would be um, presented to that. And then um, about the same time frame, uh, uh, I'm really qualified and all the other really qualified lawyers received an email asking for anybody who would have the ability to represent Mr. Brenner. I just wanted to guess. So my name and probably others were submitted to this court. This last week, this court issued an order, I think it was Thursday, um, appointing in the Rule 8 uh, process. We started to work on that. We have to enter a new contract with the Indigent Defense Fund, um, not with Box Auto County. And then they would then um, handle fund requests, separate contracts, things to that effect, which the court's aware of. Um, I then reached out to Attorney Jonathan Nish. Uh, John is also a really qualified lawyer. And it asked, you know, for him, because I was on vacation, to start looking into this, what we need to do. He reached out to the Indigent, Indigent Defense Fund um, and then uh, started that process for me and then said we would need um, this court to appoint co counsel. When I looked at um, the emails he was sending me while I was gone, as well as um, his communication with the IDF, uh, it would appear that under the contract they require two rule eight lawyers to be appointed on any aggravated murder. Uh, that's not within the purview of Box of the County. Uh, this is something that's part of the, the, the what I refer to as the fund. We have filed a motion, um, I believe Sunday, no, I'm sorry, Saturday, I was actually at the airport and, and filed a motion, asked this court to appoint Jonathan Nish as co-counsel pursuant to the IDF requirements. Uh, the state has not had the opportunity to respond to that. I acknowledge that. We just filed that um, as soon as I got back to shore. And um, so our request would be that I guess if the state wants to file a response, then we need the appropriate time to respond on things to that effect. If they uh, do not wish to file a response, we'd ask court to issue a main entry um, similar to what the court did with the court appointed on me. And um, so we could bring Mr. Uh, Nish on. And then you open them and set the next court date. So I think that's the first hurdle we need to jump through. Hurdle, not hurdle. Hurdle. All right, hurdle. Anything from the state? I saw the filings. Um, I don't know how the IDF works as far as with them appointing a second counsel or not. I know they do they definitely in capital cases. This is not a capital case. Um, but if the IDF covers two attorneys, I mean, that's none of my business. So I think that's the only question I have is whether on a non capital aggregate murder case, whether it covers two attorneys or just one. So in the information I received from Mr. Nish, who's um, very qualified, I don't know if he's with this court or was with this court already on a, a ruling case. Well, on that one, it was capital, and we, we acknowledge that. But the contract um, says the way IDF interprets that is it, and I acknowledge that the state of Utah in this case is not seeking death. But the, the, the contract and applying the statute says that if death may be a possibility, and it's not this one, but it may be, um, and it's talking about the general code section, then they, then they appoint you. Um, and usually it's lead counsel, which would be myself, who reaches out and finds competent and qualified code counsel um, on that. We have very qualified public defenders, so I'm not saying that they're not. But they are not really qualified. I'm the only one who that is really qualified. And so uh, I think what I would ask for is issue minute entry, appointing Jonathan Nish and then the IDF as co counsel. And if IDF has a concern about that, um, then we can come back before this court and raise that issue. Otherwise, if we get the state a chance to respond, and, and which we're entitled to, and then we reply, and we have to do notice to submit and all that type of process. But I think maybe that'll help alleviate. Um, but so the county's concerned we could issue an order or an entry order saying let's appoint Jonathan Nish unless IDF objects. And then Mr. Nish would be, they, he would have to enter a contract with IDF like I have to enter a contract with IDF. That would be the, the position.
position I would take. Okay. If the court agrees that with that, I would accept the next court date. I'm just not. I'm just not sure that your interpretation is correct when you say may. Clearly, as it's charged, it may, but with the state's declaration, right. that may eliminate that. Um, it may. I, I agree. And so, therefore, I'm not sure if that would apply. So, um, but I, yeah, the way the contracts, what I'm being told, is that the way the contracts are drafted by IDF, any rule eight case, because lots of the county pays into that fund, and not all the counties do, which usually the, the smaller or more rural counties. Um, then IDF appoints two really qualified lawyers. And, and that's something that happens outside the purview of anything here. That's why I think maybe to protect everybody's concerns, we can have the issue of an order saying that Mr. Uh, Jonathan Nisha is appointed as co counsel and is ordered to you know, do the same thing the court did with, with my appointment um, and then go forward there. And then if IDF has a complaint or a concern, right? We come back for this court and say, hey, Your Honor, it would appear that we were all wrong. So that's what we vacate the order of playing this commission. And we go from there. Um, let, let me just take, I'll, I'll take a look into it and then I'll issue an appropriate order. Okay. Um, whether or not I believe that that is the correct interpretation. And then once I've issued that order, if there's some disagreement from either side, you can uh, address it. That okay. Then we'll move to hearing. Okay. So I'd ask for to do is set this for a decision of prelim. I hate to do this, um, but. I have further decision of prelim July 3rd. The reason I hate to do it is I'm just recovered from surgery that week, but we need to get this case uh, proceeding forward. So unfortunately, we have to do at least six weeks. Here, okay. here's, here's the problem that that is, uh, I guess, presented in this case. Sure. Um, and I'll I think you're sense. aware of that, Mr. Uh, Studebaker, Mr. Brenner is in federal custody. Yeah, I forgot about that. Each time this court acts, it has to get permission from the federal government to bring Mr. Right. I, I, yeah, that was my mistake. Mr. Brenner in. And from what I understand from the state, the process is a minimum of six weeks. Yeah, what I've asked for is that, that, that correct? Yeah, yeah I, that's correct. Some of the counties have to it just those with federal work. That's not any, but um, that is correct. I'd ask for to set this for a decision of prelim July 31st, then. 130. Yeah, that works out. That's our good <coughs> right the state. All right, July 31st at 1.30, where the state has no opposition to the appointment of Mr. Nish, if that is uh, feasible and can be done, Mr. Studebaker, after I've had a chance to review it, um, I will issue the order. If not, I will issue the order. Um, okay, and then if there's an objection, we can ask for an objection the next section. We'll put a hearing on it. And if, if, if not, then I will issue an order that says if that request is denied, at that point, you can govern yourself accordingly. Okay, we'll do that. But on that one, because Mr. Brenner is a federal inmate, we uh, will be requesting that he his presence be waived. We don't want to wait till July 31st to, you know, get co-counsel appointed. Oh, if, if meaning if if I deny the request and you object and you want to have a hearing on the issue, right. do you want to, to waive his appearance? We waive his appearance. Yeah. yeah, just because we don't want to drag it out. Okay. Does the state have any opposition? No, that's right. Okay. And are you all right with that as well, Mr. Brenner? Is that a yes? Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. That will be everything then, unless you have something further. No, that's all we have, Thank you. Thank you.